G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today we're gonna make this a Borg Cube. I did this as a little bit of a side project for fun. And for you guys, this could be a really fun project for you guys to do while you self-isolate. And let's face it, you got nothing better to do anyway, right? So we're gonna use completely free software here. We're gonna use Krita, Blender, and a little software called JS Placement. All right, so before jumping right into Blender, we're gonna open up Krita. We're gonna open up a brand new file, 2048 by 2048. So this is gonna be the base of our displacement for much of the model. So what I'm creating is a few guides. Doesn't matter where you put them, just make it a bit uneven and it's gonna become the basis for us creating our displacement. So to create guides, you need to enable rulers and then enable show guides in the view settings. And then once you've done that, make sure you've turned on snap to guides. And then we're basically gonna fill in blocks of the guides using the square tool, using shades of black and white. So going from dark to light, I'm just gonna fill in random assortments of the grid with different shades of gray. And basically these shades will represent height values on the displacement in Blender. All right, just save that out as a PNG or a target file, whatever you like. And now it's time to open up Blender. So keep the cube, keep the light, keep the camera. We're just gonna rearrange some things to fit in the size of our cube. I'm gonna scale up the cube by about five times and apply the scale. To be honest, that's optional, but I like to have a sense of scale. Now I'm just repositioning the camera to fit the cube into the frame. All right, select the cube and then go into edit mode and subdivide it a few times. Um, yeah, until it gets a bit more dense. We basically need the extra geo for the displacement to work. Add a displacement modifier. And now we're going to create a new texture node. Call it large blocks and then set it to UV. And let's jump into the texture settings. And then we're going to import our blocks that we created in Krita. Now we're going to change the repeat to about four, and then we're going to decrease the strength of the displacement. So the amount of subdivision needed is a bit of a trial and error. So in my case, I had to subdivide it a little bit further so I get a sharper result of that displacement. And you'll see why when I add the second displacement, why that's important. Call the second displacement small blocks, set it to UV again jump into the texture settings. Now this seemed a bit weird, but delete the texture of that displacement node and re-import it because it inherits new settings. Give it a larger repeat number, maybe seven or eight, and then you get this nice displacement of different varying sizes of cubes. And what's great about this method is that it prevents that obvious tiling. And again, there's a bit of trial and error involved, so tweak the settings, tweak the strength of the displacement, and let's move on. So this next stage might be weird, but I'm gonna add a bevel modifier to this. I'm gonna set it to angle so it doesn't bevel every edge, except for the corners. Okay, before we set off our next displacement, we need to create a greeble texture. So it's basically just micro details. So basically just download that JS placement app, generate a displacement, Export it as a normal and a displacement map and you're good to go. Create a third displacement and apply the Greeble displacement as a texture map by following the same steps as before. So again, you got to rename it as Greeble, remove the linked up texture map and then re-import the Greeble texture as your displacement. And as you can see, the displacement's working, but there's just not enough resolution to get that detail. So at this stage, that's why we add a subdivision modifier above that last displacement, but under the bevel modifier. Just one or two subdivisions should do the trick. And then just tweak your displacement to your liking. And that's how we get that really cool micro detail out of that ball cube. Now you might be wondering why I chosen not to use subdivision modifiers throughout the entire thing. Well, basically it's because I found that the processing power required to maintain all those subdivisions was just too much, especially when it came to rendering and it had to calculate the build time. It just would crash every single time. There was just basically too many polygons for it to recalculate with the modifiers every single time. But as you can see, the method still works and we're getting some really cool detail out of those textures. 
and that's basically all you need to do for the geometry of the ball cube, at least for that main part. We're going to add a little bit more detail with a few extra tricks as well. So I'm just setting up some really basic light parameters just for testing purposes. So really strong sunlight. I want to see how those shadows and light bounce off those um, displacements as well. I've also made the world background completely black. Okay, for the extra detail, I need to make a brand new cube. I'm going to scale it up five times exactly like the other cube and then slightly larger. I'm then going to apply the scale. And then I'm going to go into edit mode and subdivide it a few more times. Now, I'm going to pop out of edit mode and then I'm going to add a single modifier called wireframe. And this is such a cool modifier because it's going to let us make a really cool scaffolding effect. I'm going to tweak the thickness of that scaffold. And then I'm going to pop back into edit mode. I'm going to deselect everything and then in the select toolbar, I'm going to select, select random. And then I'm going to tweak the percentage to about 30%. I'm then going to dissolve those edges. And you get a weird effect like this. But when you go back into object mode and have the wireframe modifier on, you get this really cool, weird scaffolding. And then I'm just going to repeat the process again with a second cube, but with a different selection parameter. So another random selection, I'm going to delete that, add the modifier, and then I have a really cool sci-fi Borg-like scaffolding around the cube. And it just adds a bit more flavor to the object. And I really like the effect, especially when you start lighting it. Now we can move on to the texturing. And this is where the real magic happens. It's how we light it up, how we give it even more detail and how to give it that really imposing look. So I'm just tweaking the default shader that was on the cube, just making it a dark gray, increasing the metallic to 100% and I'm doing the same with the scaffolding. And then I'm copying that material of the scaffolding onto the other scaffold objects as well. Okay, back to the cube. And obviously at this point, it looks a bit plain. So we got to add some lights to this thing. And I have a really cool method for this. And this is why I use displacements to begin with for the greebles. So I make an emission, I mix it with a mix shader, and then I use the ambient occlusion node as our mix shader. Now to get the right mix, I create a color ramp between the ambient occlusion node and the input factor and then I play with the ramp. Just make sure your PBR shader and your emission is in the right order when you mix it. Also make sure to turn on local only on the ambient occlusion node as well. Otherwise the scaffolding will also affect the ambient occlusion mixer. Because the ambient occlusion naturally finds the little crevices and cracks of the cube, you get this really natural, weird sci-fi emission effect between the parts of the cube. The added bonus is that you no longer get the tiling that you would expect from an emission texture mixer. So instead of using textures, you use the ambient occlusion and you get a much more inconsistent pattern. Now for some extra added detail, I'm adding a greeble normal map to the cube itself as well. And I'm going to give that a different scale to the displacement to give it some even more variation in the detail. With the Node Wrangler plugin turned on, push Ctrl T so we can get the mapping node connected to the normal map. And then play with the scale of the normal map to get it to a way that you like the most. As you can see in the viewport render, you can see the tiny little details starting to stick out. I multiplied the bump by about 3 or 4. Now the color is still looking a little bit too uniform, so it's time to add a bit of variation in the roughness. So I'm going to use the same Greeble displacement map as a 
roughness map as well because it's also black and white so we can use it anyway so just connect it up to the roughness and you'll see there it is a little bit of variation but it's looking a little bit too shiny in parts so we're going to change that again add a mapping node to that this um to that roughness map and then add a ramp in between the output of the roughness map and the input of the pbr shader and then just tweak the values of the black and white and then you can play with the scale again to get it to a way that you like the most and then finally i'm going to add a noise texture to the color plug that into a ramp and then plug that into the principal shader and then change the color of the ramp if you're wondering how i'm isolating the texture node there i just click on the ramp node and then with that in mind i just click Control shift and then click the node again and it sends a viewer output to the um, material and then once i'm happy with that i just click back out and we go back to the original output and as you can see the color looks way more inconsistent now looks a lot more grungy and less pristine and that looks way better looks way more creepy especially and now it's time to tweak the lighting so i've changed the lighting out from a sun lamp to an area lamp so i get more uneven lighting and as you can see the roughness maps and the normal maps are doing their job too looks which looks really really cool and now it's time to tweak the camera i've widened the camera angle to about 20 millimeters so i get a much more imposing angle of view and now it's ready to render now apologies if your computer struggles here because there is a lot of polygons with this method and unfortunately there's no easy way to get around this um, especially if you want that kind of real physical detail you need to have the geometry um, some might be asking why i'm not using adaptive subdivision and a lot of that has to do with the calculations involved it's just ridiculously high poly so in the view layer settings i'm just going to enable a few things um, but the main thing to really click is emission um, you can turn on a few other things if you plan on tweaking it a bit more in the compositor um, such as denoising so if you can't handle the render resolution of what i've got here um, just bring the resolution down and try using the ai denoiser to help you along the way all right let's add some glare to this thing so we're going to add a glare node as you can see it's added a bit of a glow around there change the fog glow make it high res change the threshold to 0.3 or less or whatever change the size to 9 um, we're going to add a second glare node this time make it medium and i'm following a similar tutorial that i found on youtube but i'll link it in the comments because it's fucking awesome all right we're going to add a mix node we're going to mix these two glare nodes together with an add and then we're going to mix this with our original image again set it to add and then play with the factor to a place that you think is the most appealing all right we're going to add a lens distortion make it really subtle though like 0.1 and 0.1 and as you can see it gives it a bit of a distortion and you can see the stars kind of flare out a little bit there all right add a color balance node change it to offset power and slope and then tweak the color value of the offset to a very dark blue it's going to be a little bit tricky i'd say set it to 0 0.01 and then in the slope make it a warmer color maybe like a very slight orangey yellow and that will warm up those highlights a bit now I'm just going to show you what the difference looks like. So I'm just going to go with a straight output into another composite node. Uh, you don't have to do this. It's just a comparison. And as you can see, it gives it a bit more edge. So with the original, it looks a bit flat. The colors are a bit flat. But with those extra edits in the compositor, 
it gives it a little bit more love. All right, I'm gonna use the emission pass to add even more glare. So um, I just hooked up the emission to the viewer. I've turned on the backdrop and then I've added a new glare node. And you can see with the different settings, we can get some really cool effects with star effects, uh, streak effects, etc. So just use whatever you like the most. And then we mix it with the rest of the node tree. And just tweak the factor to get to a point that you like the most. And yeah, I really like the effect with this. So I'm just going to run with that. And of course, you can play with the different kinds of overlays. You can change it to overlay, screen, add, and whatever you like the most. But eventually, I just switch it back to add because I think it looks the best. And it's worth noting that compositing, especially like everything else when it comes to 3D, it's a bit of a trial and error. So don't be afraid to experiment with different inputs, different color correction nodes, blur effects, motion effects, all kind of stuff. So just run with it and have some fun. And there we have it. We have a completed ball cube. Now you can either just render a still image or you can animate the camera and have some fun with that. Or you just start making other starships and create a whole new battle scene or something. Speaking of which, if you do follow along with this tutorial and make something really cool, I'd love to see what you've made out of it. So if you do, send me a link in the comments below and I can't wait to see what you make. But that's it for today. I hope you had fun. So until next time, catches.